The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger, Chapter 4. I didn't have anything special to do, so I went down to the can and chewed the rag with him while he was still shaving. We were the only ones in the can because everybody was still down at the game. It was hot as hell and the windows were all steamy. There were about 10 washbowls all right against the wall. Strat ladder had the middle one. I sat down on the one right next to him and started turning the cold water on and off. This nervous habit I have. Stratletter kept whistling Song of India while he shaved. He had one of those very piercing whistles that are practically never in tune. And he always picked out some song that's hard to whistle, even if you're a good whistler, like Song of India or Slaughter on 10th Avenue. He could really mess a song up. You remember I said before that Ackley was a slob in his personal habits? Well, so is Stratletter, but in a different way. Stratlatter was more of a secret slob. He always looked all right, Stratlatter, for instance. You should have seen the razor he shaved himself with. It was always rusty as hell and full of lather and hairs and crap. He never cleaned it or anything. He always looked good when he was finished fixing himself up, but he was a secret slob anyway, if you knew him the way I did. The reason he fixed himself up to look good was because he was madly in love with himself. He thought that he was the handsomest guy in the Western Hemisphere. He was pretty handsome too, I'll admit it. But he was mostly the kind of handsome that guy, he's mostly the kind of a handsome guy that if your parents saw his picture in your yearbook, they'd right away say, who's this boy? I mean, he was mostly a yearbook kind of handsome guy. I knew a lot of guys at Pensy I thought were a lot handsomer than Stratlatter, but they wouldn't look handsome if you saw their pictures in a yearbook. They'd look like they had big noses or their ears stuck out. I've had that experience frequently. Anyway, I was sitting on the wash bowl next to where Stratlatter was shaving, sort of turning the water on and off. I still had my red hunting hat on with a peak around to the back and all. I really got a bang out of that hat. Hey, Stratletter said, want to do me a big favor? What? I said, not too enthusiastic. He was always asking you to do him a big favor. You take a very handsome guy or a guy that thinks he's a real hotshot and they're always asking you to do them a big favor just because they're crazy about themselves. They're always uh, asking you to do them a big favor. Well, just because they're crazy about themselves, they think they're, that you're crazy about them too and that you're just dying to do them a favor. It's sort of funny in a way. You going out tonight, he said. I might. I might not. I don't know. Why? Well, I got a hundred uh, pages to read for History Monday, he said. How about writing a composition for me, for English? I'll be up the creek if I don't get the goddamn thing in by Monday. The reason I ask, how about it? It was very ironical. It really was. I'm the one that's flunking out of the goddamn place, and you're asking me to write you a goddamn composition? I said. Yeah, I know. The thing is, though, I'll be up the creek if I don't get it in. Be a buddy. Be a buddy, Rue, okay? I didn't answer him right away. Suspense is good for some bastards like Stratladder. What on, I said. Anything. Anything descriptive. A room or a house or something you once lived in or something, you know. Just as long as it's descriptive as hell. He gave out a big yawn while he said that, which is something that gives me a royal pain in the ass. I mean, if somebody yawns right while they're asking you to do them a goddamn favor, just don't do it too good is all he said. That son of a bitch Hartzell thinks you're a hotshot in English and he knows you're my roommate. So, I mean, don't stick all the commas and stuff in the right place. That's something that gives me a royal pain. I mean, if you're good at writing compositions and somebody starts talking about commas, Stratletter was always doing that. He wanted you to think that the only reason that he was lousy at writing compositions was because he stuck all of the commas in the wrong place. He was a little bit like Ackley that way. I once sat next to Ackley at this basketball game. We had a terrific guy on the team, Howie Coyle, that could sink them from the middle of the floor without even touching the backboard or anything. Ackley kept saying the whole goddamn game, that Coyle had a perfect build for basketball. God, how I hate that stuff. I get bored sitting on that washbowl after a while, so I backed up a few feet and started doing this tap dance just for the hell of it. I was just amusing myself. I can't really 
tap dance or anything, but it was a stone floor in the can and it was good for tap dancing. I started in imitating one of those guys in the movies in one of those musicals. I hate the movies like poison, but I get a bang imitating them. Old strat ladder watched me in the mirror while he was shaving. All I need is an ex- uh, an audience. I'm an exhibitionist. I'm the goddamn governor's son, I said. I was knocking myself out, tap dancing all over the place. He doesn't want me to be a tap dancer. He wants me to go to Oxford, but it's in my goddamn blood, tap dancing. Old Stratladder laughed. He didn't have too bad a sense of humor. It's the opening night of the Zigfield Follies. I was getting out of breath. I have hardly any wind at all. The leading man can't go on. He's drunk as a bastard. So who do they get to take his place? Me. That's who. The little old goddamn governor's son. Where'd you get that hat? Stratletter said. You meant my hunting hat. He never seen it before. I was out of breath anyway, so I quit horsing around. I took off my hat and looked at it for about the 90th time. I got it in New York this morning for a buck. You like it? Stratletter nodded. Sharp, he said. He was only flattering me, though, because right away he said... Listen, are you going to write that composition for me? I have to know. If I get the time, I will. If I don't, I won't, I said. I went over and sat down at the washbowl next to him again. Who's your date, I asked him. Fitzgerald. Hell no, I told you. I'm through with that pig. Yeah, give her to me, you boy. No kidding. She's my type. Take her. She's too old for you. All of a sudden, for no good reason... Really, except that I was sort of in the mood for horsing around. I felt like jumping off the washbowl and getting old strat ladder and a half Nelson. That's a wrestling hold, in case you don't know, where you get the other guy around the neck and choke him to death, if you feel like it. So I did. I did it. I landed on him like a goddamn panther. Cut it out, Holden, for Christ's sake, strat ladder said. He didn't feel like horsing around. He was shaving it all. What do you want to do? Make me do cut my goddamn head off? I didn't let go, though. I had a pretty good half Nelson on him. Liberate yourself from my vice-like grip, I said. Jesus Christ. He put down his razor and all of a sudden jerked his arms up and sort of broke my hold on him. He was a very strong guy. I am a very weak guy. Now cut out that crap, he said. He started shaving himself all over again. He always shaved himself twice to look gorgeous with his crummy old razor. Who is your date if it isn't Fitzgerald, I asked him. I sat down on the washbowl next to him again. That Phyllis Smith, babe? No, it was supposed to be, but the arrangements got all screwed up. I got Bud Thaw's girl's roommate now. Hey, almost forgot. She knows you. Who does? I said, my date. Yeah? I said, what's her name? I was pretty interested. I'm thinking, uh, Jane Gallagher. Jean Gallagher. Jean Gallagher. Boy, I nearly dropped dead when he said that. Jane Gallagher, I said. I even got up for the washbowl when he said that. I damn near dropped dead. You're damn right I know her. She practically lived right next door to me the summer before last. She had this big damn Doberman pincher. That's how I met her. Her dog used to keep coming over and our, you're right in my light, Holden, for Christ's sake, Stratletter said. You have to stand right there. Boy, was I excited, though. I really was. Where is she, I asked him. I ought to go down and say hello to her or something. Where is she? Is she in the annex? Yeah. Well, how'd she happen to mention me? Does she go to BM now? She said she might go there. She said she might go to Shipley too. I thought she went to Shipley. How'd she happen to mention me? I was pretty excited. I really was. I don't know. For Christ's sake, lift up, will you? You're on my towel, Stratletter said. I was sitting on a stupid towel. Jane Gallagher, I said. I couldn't get over it. Jesus, age Christ. Old Stratletter was putting Vitalis on his hair. My Vitalis. She's a dancer, I said. Ballet and all. She used to practice about two hours every day, right in the middle of the hottest weather and all. She was worried that it might make her legs lousy, all thick and all. I used to play checkers with her all the time. You used to play what with her all the time? Checkers. Checkers? For Christ's sake. Yeah, she wouldn't move any of her kinks. What she do was she get a king. She wouldn't move it. She'd just leave it in the back row. She'd get them all lined up in the back row, and then she'd never use them. She just... Like the way they look when they were all in the back row. Stratletter didn't say anything. That kind of stuff doesn't interest most people. Her mother belonged to the same club we did, I said. I used to caddy once in a while just to make some dough. I caddied for her mother a couple of times. She went around in about 170 for nine holes. Stratletter wasn't hardly listening. He was combing his gorgeous locks. I ought to go down and at least say hello to her, I said. Why don't you? 
I will in a minute. He started parting his hair all over again. It took him about an hour to comb his hair. Her mother and father were divorced. Her mother was married against some booze hound, I said. Skinny guy with hairy legs. I remember him. He wore shirts all the time. Jane said that he was supposed to be a playwright or some goddamn thing, but all I ever saw him do was booze all the time and listen to every goddamn single mystery program on the radio and run around the goddamn house naked with Jane around and all. Yeah, Shrout Letter said. That really interested him about the booze hound running around the house naked with Jane around. Stratletter was a very sexy bastard. She had a lousy childhood. I'm not kidding. That didn't interest Stratletter, though. Only very sexy stuff interested him. Jane Gallagher. Jesus, I couldn't get her off my mind. I really couldn't. I ought to go down and say hello to her at least. Why the hell don't you instead of keep saying it, Stratletter said. I walked over to the window, but you couldn't see out of it. It was so steamy from all the heat in the can. I'm not in the mood right now, I said. I wasn't either. You have to be in the mood for those things. I thought she went to Shipley. I could have sworn she went to Shipley. I walked around the can for a little while. I didn't have anything else to do. Did she enjoy the game, I said? Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. Did she tell you you used to play Chuck Girls all the time or anything? I don't know. For Christ's sake, I, I only just met her, Stratladder said. He was finished combing his goddamn gorgeous hair. He was putting away all his crummy toilet articles. Listen, give her my regards, will ya? Okay, Stratletter said, but I knew he probably wouldn't. You take a guy like Stratletter, they never give your regards to people. He went back to the room, but I stuck around in the can for a while thinking about old Jane. And then I went back to the room too. Stratletter was putting on his tie in front of the mirror when I got there. He spent around half his goddamn life in front of the mirror. I sat down in my chair and sort of watched him for a while. Hey, I said, don't tell her I got kicked out, will you? Okay. That was one good thing about Stratladder. You didn't have to explain every goddamn little thing with him the way you had to do with Ackley. Mostly, I guess, because he wasn't too interested. And that's really why. Ackley, it was different. Ackley was a very nosy bastard. He put on my hound's tooth jacket. Jesus, try not to stretch all over the place, I said. I'd only worn it twice. I won't. Where the hell's my cigarettes? On the desk? He never knew where he left anything. Under your muffler. He put them in his coat uh, pocket. My coat pocket. Pocket. I pulled the peak of my hunting hat around to the front all of a sudden for a change. I was getting sort of nervous all of a sudden. I'm quite a nervous guy. Listen. Where are you going on your date with her, I asked him. You know yet? I don't know. New York, if we have time. She only signed out for 9.30, for Christ's sake. I didn't like the way he said it, so I said, the reason she did that, she probably just didn't know what a handsome, charming bastard you are. If she'd known, she probably would have signed out for 9.30 in the morning. Goddamn right, Stratletter said. You couldn't rile him too easily. He was too conceited. No kidding. Now, do that composition for me, he said. He had his coat on and he was all ready to go. Don't knock yourself out or anything, but just make it descriptive as hell, okay? I didn't answer him. I didn't feel like it. All I said was, ask her if she still keeps her kings, all of her kings, in the back row. Okay, Stratletter said, but I knew he wouldn't. Take it easy now. He banged the hell out of the room. I sat there for about a half an hour after he left. I mean, I just sat in my chair not doing anything. I kept thinking about Jane and about Stratletter having a date with her and all. It made me so nervous I nearly went crazy. I already told you what a sexy bastard Stratletter was. All of a sudden, Ackley barged back in again through the damn shower curtains as usual. For once in my stupid life, I was really glad to see him. He took my mind off of the other stuff. He stuck around till around dinner time, talking about all the guys at Pensy that he hated their guts and squeezing his big pimple on his chin. He didn't even use his handkerchief. I don't even think the bastard had a handkerchief, if you want to know the truth. I never saw him use one anyway.